Curiosity Challenge. Asking the questions, Jeremy Paxman. Hello. Last time, the Open University took one of the last two places in round two of this competition. Tonight, in the second of the playoffs for the highest scoring losing teams from round one, we'll find out who'll be joining them. Now, the University of Manchester has taken the title of series champions four times in the past and its newest team grabbed an early lead in a first round match against Selwyn College, Cambridge, but couldn't hang on to it. They were 30 points behind at the gong, but their score of 160 is the second highest of the four teams in these playoffs. On that first outing, they impressed us with their knowledge of Spencer Percival, Engels Law, the Big Easy and the Big Apple, with an average age of 26. Let's meet the Manchester team again. Hello, my name's Edmund Chapman. I'm originally from Norwich and I'm doing a PhD on literature and translation. Hi, I'm Matthew Stallard. I'm from Wolverhampton. I'm doing a PhD in American Studies. This is their captain. Hi, I'm John Ratcliffe. I'm from Manchester and I'm doing chemical engineering. Hi, I'm Charlie Rowlands. I'm from Albrighton in Shropshire and I'm studying genetics and Chinese. Their opponents from the University of Sussex took the lead against St Peter's College, Oxford, a few minutes into the match, but then they wilted and allowed their opponents to get 100 points ahead. But what could have been a rout ended as a fairly honourable defeat. Sussex fought back and had 150 points at the gong against their opponents, 205. Idiosyncratic excellences included the Jurassic Coast, beach volleyball and the Eccles cake. With an average age of 30, let's meet the Sussex team. Hello, my name's Tom Whitehurst. I'm from Rill in North Wales, and I'm studying for an MSc in Cognitive Neuroscience. Hi, I'm David Spence. I'm originally from Leicester, and I'm studying for an MSc in Scientific Computation. This is their captain. Hello, I'm Joss MacDonald. I'm from Romsey in Hampshire, and I'm studying for a BA in History and Politics. Hello, I'm Matthew Dean. I'm from Birmingham, and I'm studying for a BA in Philosophy. OK, you all know the rules, so fingers on buzzers. Here's your first starter for ten. Quote, our website is written in this very authoritative style and, as you know, men have no problem speaking in an authoritative manner about something they know nothing about. Women are much more sensible. This comment refers to the gender... Manchester Stellard. Wikipedia. Correct. First set of bonuses are on a Roman statesman, Manchester. Oh, lucky Rome, born when I was consul, is a line of verse by which Roman orator who was consul in 63 BC and uncovered the Catiline conspiracy? Cicero. Correct. In Cicero's dialogue De Legibus, written in the last years of the Republic, he stated that salus populi suprema lex esto, that is, the chief law is what? Lex. I think it's reading, reading or knowledge. Knowledge. No, it's the good of the people. <laughs> Finally, delivered in 44 and 43 BC, Cicero's orations known as the Philippics were directed against which Roman general, a member of the Triumvirate from 43 BC? Pompey. No, it's Mark Antony. Ten points for this. Originally indicating a smooth, stiff sheet of clay or wax-covered wood used for an inscription, meaning... Manchester Ratcliffe. Tablet. Tablet is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on penal colonies, Manchester. Which Russian dramatist wrote a thesis called The Island of Sakhalin after spending three months in 1890 observing prisoners in the Russian penal colony? Chekhov. Correct. Which 1979 musical by Stephen Sondheim begins with its protagonist returning to London in 1846, having spent 15 years in a penal colony in Australia? Yeah. Sweeney Todd? Correct. Which crime writer wrote the dystopian novel The Children of Men, in which oh. the Isle of Man is used as a penal colony? Is it Solomon? Oh, uh, 
Rankin. Ian Rankin. No, it's P.D. James. Ten points for this. Noted for her outspoken and assertive approach to life, who won her first Academy Award for the 1933 film Morning Glory? Her next two Oscars came more than 30 years later for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and The Lion in Winter, her final award being in 1981 for On Golden Pond. Manchester Rowland. Jane Fonda. No. Sussex Whitehurst. Vivian Lee. No, it's Catherine Hepburn. Ten points for this starter question. In engineering, what seven-letter word denotes a man-made object placed in a river to manage the depth and flow of water? The same word may be used in a military context to describe both a balloon used to defend against... Lo Manchester Ratcliffe. Sorry, no, you buzz, you must say. answer. I'm going to have to fine you five points. Defend against low-level air attacks ah. and a method... Sussex of... MacDonald. Barrage? Barrage is right, yes. So you get a set of bonuses on probability, Sussex. The conditional probability of an event A given an event B is equal to the conditional probability of B given A multiplied by the probability of A, all divided by the probability of B. These words express a theorem named after which English theologian born in 1702? Bayes. Bayes? Correct. Four red and four blue paper hats are randomly distributed among eight Christmas crackers with one in each. What's the conditional probability that a guest cracker contains a red hat, given that both of the guest's neighbours receive blue hats? Uh, two over three? Correct, two-thirds, yes. And finally, Bayes' theorem is thought to be his solution to a problem originating in the Ars Conjectandi, a work of 1713 by a member of which family of Swiss mathematicians? Euler? No, Euler was later, it's Bernoulli. Ten points for this, which is a picture question. You're going to see the nicknames or popular names of a national football team or a series of national football teams. For ten points, name all three of the national teams to which they refer. Manchester Stellard. Brazil. Italy. Come Germany. on. Correct. Right, following on from the national teams of Brazil, Germany and Italy, for your bonuses, three footballing terms written in Portuguese, German and Italian, respectively. In each case, I want the meaning of the term. Firstly, for five. Own goal. 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 Yeah. Oh, yeah, own goal. Own goal. Own goal. Yeah. Own goal. Correct. Secondly. That's goalkeeper. Goalkeeper, that is, yeah. Goalkeeper. Correct. And finally... Free um, kick, will be free something, yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Free, kick. free, free kick. kick. Free kick is correct, yes. <laughs> For ten points, I want you to give me the three-letter word which completes this observation from J.P. Dunleavy's The Ginger Man. When you don't have any money, the problem is food. When you have money, it's... Manchester Stellard. Tax. Nope. One of you, Buzz. Sussex, come on, how many three little boys? Sussex MacDonald. Sex. Correct. <laughs> how sweetly baffled you looked. <laughs> right. <laughs> Your uh, bonuses are on the words of Nobel laureates. For a country to have a great writer is like having another government. That's why no regime has ever loved great writers, only minor ones. Which Russian-born Nobel laureate wrote those words in the 1964 work, The First Circle? Solzhenitsyn. No, I can't accept that. It's Solzhenitsyn. Secondly, it's very different from living in academia in Oxford. We called someone vicious in a review for the Times Literary Supplement. We didn't know what vicious was. Which future Nobel laureate said that 
in 1988, soon after returning to her country. Doris Lessing? No, it's Aung San Suu Kyi. Lastly, not every fiction writer entering a relation with politics trades imagination for the hair shirt of the party hack. These are the words of which South African, the winner of the Nobel Prize for Literature in 1991? Uh, that's Doris Lessing. No, it isn't. It's <laughs> Nadine Gordimer. Ten points for this. Mountains, Central American, Lowland and Malayan are four species of which... Cell 16. Tapir. Tapir is right, yes. <laughs> Get these bonuses, you'll be on level pegging. They're on Test Cricket at Trent Bridge. Firstly, for five points, which Middlesex batsman's score of 278 against Pakistan in 1954 is the highest individual test innings at Trent Bridge? Middlesex? No, no, Compton. Oh, sorry, yeah, Dennis Compton. Compton. I'm sorry, I had to take the first answer you give and you got confused. It was Dennis Compton, though. Bad luck. In 1989, the Australian openers became the first pair to bat through a full day's play in a test in England, continuing on the second day to make 329 for the first wicket. Name either of the two batsmen involved. No, it was Marsh and Taylor. And finally, born in Antigua, which West Indian scored 232 at Trent Bridge on his test debut in England in 1976? During the calendar year, he made 1,710 test runs at an average of 90, a record that stood for 30 years. Viv Richards? It was Viv Richards, yes. <laughs> right, ten points for this starter. Which Prime Minister sent Lord Ashburton to the United States to resolve border and maritime search issues? The treaty that followed was signed during the presidency of John Tyler in the same year that saw the end of the First Opium War and the First Anglo-Afghan War. Sussex MacDonald. Palmerston. Anyone like to buzz from Manchester? Manchester Stellard. Disraeli. No, it was Robert Peel. Ten points for this starter question. A stronghold on a 180-metre-high pillar of rock Sigiriya, or Lion Mountain, is a UNESCO World Heritage Site in which country? Poems inscribed on its rocks are among the most ancient texts in the Sinhala language, and it... Sussex Whitehurst. Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is correct, yes. <laughs> These bonuses are on authors born in 1914. Born in Gloucestershire in 1914, which writer's best-known work begins with the words... I was set down from the carrier's cart at the age of three, and there, with a sense of bewilderment and terror, my life in the village began. Um, no idea. That's Laurie Lee inside it with Rosie. Secondly, born in French Indochina, which novelist won the Prix Goncourt in 1984 with The Lover? She's also noted for the screenplay of the 1959 film Hiroshima Mon Amour. <laughs> no, no idea. That was Marguerite Durat. And finally, born near London in 1914, which novelist is the creator of the Napoleonic-era naval figures Jack Aubrey and Stephen Maturin? Hmm? Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, sorry. That was Patrick O'Brien. Right, time for a music round. For your music starter, you'll hear a piece of popular music. Ten points if you can name the artist. I've been looking for freedom. I've been looking so long. Sussex Whitehurst. David Hasselhoff. It is looking for freedom, yes. <laughs> God, you have to confess to embarrassing news on this show. Um, OK, November 2014 marks the 25th anniversary of the Berlin Wall coming down, an event for which Mr Hasselhoff claims some credit on the basis that the song you heard, Looking for Freedom, was one of the biggest hits in West Germany in 1989. For your bonuses, three more of the top-selling hits in West Germany in that year. Firstly, name this band, which peaked at number one and spent over four months in the top 20.
No, we're stuck on that one. That was rock set with the look. Uh, secondly, this artist who peaked at number two and spent three months in the top 20. Nominate Spence. That's Nana Cherry. It is indeed, yes, Buffalo Stance. And mercifully, to end this artist, <laughs> she also peaked at number two and spent the first six weeks of 1989 in the top 20. Yeah. Enya is right, yes. Thank you for saying that. Ten points for this. Wicked and cruel boy, I said. You're like a murderer. You're like a slave driver. You're like the Roman emperors. These words appear in the opening chapter of which 19th century novel following an incident in which the cousin of the heroine throws a book at her? Manchester Stellard. Jaina. Correct. <laughs> right, here are some bonuses for you then. They're on biochemistry, Manchester. Along with Andrew Benson and James Basham of the University of California at Berkeley, which US Nobel laureate gives his name to the cycle that includes the dark reactions of photosynthesis? Calvin. Calvin. Correct. In the Calvin cycle, for what organic substance do the letters R U B P stand? Nominate Roland. <laughs> uh, ribulose biphosphate? <laughs> Correct. Ribulose biphosphate forms an unstable intermediary that breaks down to form which three carbon compound? Yeah. Nominate Roland again. Uh, triose phosphate? Yeah, I'll accept that, yeah. Three phosphoglycerate, yes. Oh. Ten points for this. <laughs> Discovered in 1735, which ferromagnetic element shares its name with a blue pigment largely used in staining glass? On the Manchester Radcliffe. Cobalt. Cobalt is right. <laughs> These bonuses are on the 20th century politician Ellen Wilkinson. Firstly, in 1935, Wilkinson became the MP for which Tyneside constituency, devastated by unemployment following the closure of Palmer's shipyard. In 1936, she led a march of the unemployed from there to London. Jarrow. 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 Correct. A resolute opponent of fascism, Wilkinson argued forcefully against non-intervention in which conflict that began in July 1936? Spanish Civil War? Correct. In 1945, Wilkinson became only the second woman to be appointed to the Cabinet as Minister of Education. She implemented a 1944 Act popularly known by the name of which Conservative? Churchill. It was the Butler Act, Rab Butler, the education reformer. Right, ten points for this. A masterpiece in the true sense of the word. One of those rare works that reflect the aspirations of an entire era. These words of Tchaikovsky refer to which opera first performed in Paris in 1875 and set in Seville? Manchester Chapman. Carmen? Carmen is correct, yes. Manchester, these bonuses are on geological history. Which German scientist was the author of the 1915 work The Origin of Continents and Oceans, a pioneering work that argued in favour of the theory of continental drift? Sorry, we don't know. That's Alfred Wegener. What name is given to the single supercontinent of the Mesozoic era that later split into smaller land masses, according to Wegener's theory? The super Pangaea was when it was all still together, and then it split into Pangaea and Gondwana. So I think Pangaea. Pangaea. Correct. The initial breakup of Pangaea is believed to have resulted in the formation of two smaller continents: Laurasia in the northern hemisphere, and which continent in the southern hemisphere? Gondwana. Gondwana. Because it's two. Gondwana. 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 Gondwana land is correct. Yes. Right, we're going to take another picture round. For your picture starter, you'll see a painting. For ten points, I'd like you to give me the name of the artist. Manchester Rowlands. Uh, Surah. 
Sura is correct, yes. <laughs> I, I thought, okay, that's right. <laughs> I thought I got that. We all thought. A Sunday afternoon on the island of La Grande Jatte was one of the paintings featured in the 1986 film Ferris Bueller's Day Off during a scene shot in the Art Institute of Chicago. For your bonuses, three more works of art which appeared in that scene. I want the name of the French artist in each case. Firstly, for five, a version of this piece appears in the Chicago Gallery. Rodin. It is Rodin, his portrait of Balzac. Secondly... Oh, that's... Um, yeah, could be. Degas? I thought Degas liked the circus. No, I think, yeah, I think, <laughs> I think you like Degas. Degas. We all like the circus. Degas. No, it's Toulouse Le Trek. Oh, right. Inimitable, I'd say. Yeah. And finally. Oh, that's Gauguin. Yeah. Gauguin. Day of the God. Yes, well done. Ten points for this. In statistics, what term is used for any of the three values of a variable that divide its distribution into four intervals with equal probability, called individually the 25th, 50th... Sussex Whitehurst. Core time. Correct. <laughs> right, your bonuses are on winners of the Carbuncle Cup awarded by Building Design magazine to what it regards as the UK's ugliest building to be completed in the previous 12 months. In each case, identify the winner from the description. Firstly, the 2010 winner, a 43-storey skyscraper in the London borough of Southwark with three 9-metre wind turbines at the top of the building. Also known as the razor, its name is the plural of a Latin word meaning layer or class. Come on. Yeah. Sorry? Lamina is what I said, but I don't... Come on, that. let's have it, please. Lamina? No, it's Strata. Secondly, the 2011 winner, a mixed-use property development on the site of former docks in the northwest of England. Media City? It is Media City, UK. <laughs> And finally, the 2012 winner, a renovation by the River Thames described as a ship in a throttle. Let's have it, lads. Cutty Sark. Cutty Sark is correct, the renovation thereof. <laughs> Ten points for this. There are about five minutes to go. Darnia and Chinese parsley are alternative names for what culinary plant? Its name? Manchester Rowlands. Is it coriander. It is, yes. <laughs> These bonuses, Manchester, are on a composer published in 1950. The German musicologist Wolfgang Schmeider, the BWV, is a catalogue of the works of which composer, born in 1685? Bach. Yeah. Bach. Bach. Correct. The mother of his 13 younger children, the second wife of J.S. Bach, is usually known by which two names? This is Jane. We don't know. She's Anna Magdalena. And yeah. lastly, what are the two given names of J.S. Bach's youngest son, the organist and opera composer, often known as the London Bach? Charles Emmanuel. No, it's Johann Christian. There's about three and a half minutes ago. Ten points for this. Which work has as its subtitle The Contemplative Man's Recreation? First published in 1653, it's been described as one of the most frequently reprinted books in English literature. Manchester Stellard. The Complete Angler. Correct. <laughs> You're a damn good guesser. <laughs> <laughs> right, your bonuses are on entomology. The presence or absence of what features distinguishes the two groups of insects known as pterygota and apterygota? Weeds. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you like yeah. shells on the wings. 
Wings. Wings. Wings is correct. Yeah. What is the common English name for the ephemeroptera? Oh, mayfly. Mayfly. Yeah. Mayfly. Mayfly, shadfly is correct. Mayflies are hemimetabolic insects. What is the immature aquatic stage called? Yeah. A nymph. Correct. <laughs> Ten points for this. In England, the shortest boundary between two ceremonial counties is a 20-metre stretch close to the A1 near Stamford between which two counties? Manchester Rowlands. Rutland and Lincolnshire. Sussex Spence. Lincolnshire and Nottinghamshire. No, it's Lincolnshire and Northamptonshire. Ten points for this. Which decade saw the execution of Savonarola in Florence, the Alhambra decree that expelled Jews from Spain, and Vasco da Gama? Manchester Chapman. 1490s? Correct. <laughs> Your bonuses this time are on English and British kings. All three have the same regnal name. Firstly, who was the last king of England to die before reaching the age of 21? Edward the Sixth. Correct. Who was the last king of England to be born in France? Edward. <laughs> yeah, which no, <laughs> no, it's Edward. Um, Oh, Edward the Third was. Wasn't he born in France? Which is why. Come on. Mm -hmm. Edward the Third. No, it's Edward the Fourth. Finally, who was the last monarch of Great Britain to accede to the throne unmarried? Edward the Eighth. Eighth, yeah. Yeah, Edward VIII. Oh, correct. Ten points for this. In contemporary fiction, Julie E. Senada's Words for a Stranger, David Mitchell's Autumns of Jacob de Bzout, and Khalid Hosseini's Splendid Sons are linked by what number? In... Manchester Rowlands. A thousand. A thousand is correct. <laughs> These bonuses are on National Parks, Manchester. In each case, mm -hmm. name the English National Park that is the location of the following prehistoric sites. Firstly, the Bronze Age Barrows at Paracoom and the Tar Steps, a prehistoric bridge across the River Baal. Uh, 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 Scotland somewhere? Mm -hmm. um, oh, it could be... Uh, Kansas. Come on, let's have it, please. Like what, which one is it? Come on. Uh, and that's the wrong... I'll tell you, it's excellent. <laughs> the Sussex have 95, Manchester have 210. Well, bad luck, Sussex. You didn't really get into your stride there at all, did you? Bad luck. Uh, we shall have to say goodbye to you, I'm afraid. Uh, Manchester, congratulations. 210 is another terrific score from you. We should look forward to seeing you in the next stage of the competition. Uh, I hope you can join us next time for the start of the second round matches. But until then, it's goodbye from Sussex University. Bye. Bye. It's goodbye from Manchester University. Goodbye. And it's goodbye from me. Goodbye. <laughs>